Hey, so does anyone want this this shirt here? Uh, it's been in my closet, like festering, and it's poisoned every single other bit of clothing that I have. I mean, this is like the equivalent of having mold in your house. You know, you can have it. You know, it, it even has your favorite player for a good cause. There's been a lot of drama regarding Antonio Conte and Tottenham recently, and today we're gonna dive into that. After just 9 matches into the 2021-22 season with Nuno Espirito Santos, Tottenham had already lost 4 times. All of them against London rivals, including Crystal Palace. <laughs> where if you look at the stats from that match, you'd think the world went upside down. The last draw for the board was a 3-0 loss to Manchester United, and Nuno was sacked without hesitation. In his place would come Antonio Conte. Conte was known for being someone who could change the culture of a club around within a split second with his intense mindset. The manager had seen a trophy at his last three clubs, and there was also that time he led a mid-ass Italian team to the quarterfinals of the Euros. So if there was anyone to finally end the trophy drought for Spurs, it would be Antonio. Just uh, don't expect too much from the European competitions. However, one concern about Conte, and it's a pretty big one too, the man is more persistent than US Army recruiters with high school kids. Simply put, once his mind is onto something, you will never be able to change it. And if he doesn't get his way, things get toxic really quick. But that being said, maybe this was Conte saying he was willing to finally change and trust in the project for more than three years. Because the past few clubs he managed were already good enough to be title contenders. Spurs, on the other hand, weren't too far off, but it would take a little more time. Conte started his tenure with Spurs going unbeaten throughout the first nine games with six wins and three draws. Oh yeah, he also banned ketchup in his first week. What? What the fuck? Spurs, though, hit their first roadblock of the season throughout late January to late February when the club lost four of their five games. After the fourth loss against Burnley in particular, Antonio Conte in a post-match press conference had a massive outburst, stating that the club had brought him in to change the situation, but the situation was not changing. He also practically disregarded the chase for top four, saying the club right now is more focused on the relegation race. Someone has to speak about uh, the... the, the, the the race for the fourth place uh, and uh, the reality that in the last five games and we have to pay attention or don't fight for the relegation zone. And this was despite the club only being seven points from the Champions League spots. This was an extraordinary response for even Conte's standards. Many sources believe that with an outburst like this, Conte was definitely not considering staying for the future. And if you know anything about Conte in the future, <laughs> There is never any certainty. The man practically teases clubs like, yeah, you know, maybe I'll stay. It, it depends on the weather tomorrow. However, Conte claimed the response after the Burnley loss was a calculated attempt to get a reaction from his players, and it seemed to be exactly what the players needed. That wake-up call, along with the January signings of both Dejan Kulisevsky and Rodrigo Bentancourt, saw things click significantly faster. Tottenham would lose just two of their remaining fixtures, soaring from eighth to an improbable fourth place. Dejan Kulisevsky scored eight times and assisted five in just half a season, mind you. Harry Kane being Harry Kane scored 17 and assisted 9. One surprise was Sun Hung Min really stepping up, scoring 23 times and winning the golden boot in the process. There was also the exceptional double pivot of Pierre-Emil Hoiberg and Rodrigo Bentancourt. Bentancourt especially was growing way faster into the league than people expected. And of course, you couldn't forget about Cuti Romero, who was one of the best defenders in the league. But even with this great turnaround and a foundation to build upon for a promising upcoming season, Antonio Conte refused to talk about his future with Spurs. Going into the next season, Spurs had to make sure not to f*** up the summer window. Because they knew if Conte wasn't happy, his attitude and behavior towards everyone would change very quickly. So Spurs splashed the cash and spent over $170 million to bring in Richarlison, Christian Romero on a permanent deal, Yves Bissouma, Jed Spence, and Ivan Perisic. And to everyone's relief, it appeared that Conte was happy with his signings. Especially Ivan Perisic, a player he'd been very familiar with before. It was actually because of Conte that we got to see the best of Perisic at Inter. Although, there were still these little bits of uncertainty that Conte would sprinkle throughout his press conferences. When there were talks about Spurs potentially being a title contender until the later stages of the season, Conte pretty much dismissed that. He added, to reach other teams at the top level, we needed time, patience, and transfer markets. At least two transfer markets to reach the same level. Aside from the irony of the statements, just keep that quote in your mind for now. Tottenham started the 2022-23 campaign pretty well, going unbeaten in their first seven games. As a result, they were placed second in the league. However, since a loss to Arsenal, 
things have only gone south. Since the beginning of October, Tottenham has failed to produce any consistent results. As consequence for this, Tottenham are just barely in the top four right now. And they're very lucky because every other contender has been awful this year. A big reason for Tottenham's failed performances is the fact that none of their players really fit Conte's system, which is a rigid 3-4-3 formation set up in a low block for counterattacks, despite the incredible attacking talent Spurs consist of. In fact, the attack has looked really flat and barely cohesive because of how Spurs are set up. And if you look at this map, the opposition displayed in red has a lot of control of areas that Tottenham should be in control of. And there is a counter argument that Tottenham has scored the third most goals in the league, but you gotta remember that this team has Harry Kane. That's their X factor and he has scored 52% of their goals. You wanna know who the second best scorer is right now? It's Sun with six. But it's also because of that low block that Spurs have been suffering so much. It's actually been a pattern throughout the season that Tottenham will have an awful first half and then come back to scratch wins against the likes of relegation candidates Bournemouth. And of course, when you barely can even beat Bournemouth, you probably won't fare any better against anyone who even is slightly better than you. However, the biggest problem about everything we've just mentioned is the fact that Antonio Conte has refused to change any of his tactics. His system may have worked last season just because his mentality is as addictive as crack, but teams have learned and he was already at a disadvantage playing an unorthodox style of football in contrast to the high pressing systems in the league. In fact, another problem plaguing this side is their lack of intensity. Spurs are ranked seventh from bottom for PPDA, which basically means they're allowing oppositions to pass around and dominate them. So with that all being said, let's now transition to what everyone's talking about. The month is March and Tottenham continue their run of poor form. A loss to Wolves, then they crash out in the FA Cup, and they followed that up by being eliminated by Milan in the Champions League. Meaning, once again, no trophies. But more recently, after blowing a 3-1 lead against the worst team in the league, Conte had quite a few words. A journalist asked him why exactly has the team gotten worse somehow after such a great start. And Conte responds by saying, quote, the players are used to it here. They don't play for something important. They don't play under pressure. But then he went and said with his chest something that he was probably holding in for a couple months now. A Tottenham, Tottenham story is this. 20 years that there is the owner and never won something. Oh my God. I love this man. Conte's other big point was how every time something bad happens, it falls under the manager while everyone else is protected. And he's definitely got a point. I mean, a part of this video has literally just been dunking on his tactics. The players also do deserve a lot of the responsibility for this underwhelming season. I mean, for example, Sun has only scored six goals. You know what's even worse? Richarlison, who hasn't scored a single goal. Emerson Royale, Ryan Sessegnon, Hugo Lloris, Ease Bisuma, Lucas Mora, the list goes on. And why, why on God Green's earth are people still trusting in Clemo Longle? Why? Conte is absolutely right about the ownership as well. Daniel Levy has barely shown any ambition towards winning anything. And when Antonio talks about the managers of the past, I think it really points out that Spurs just don't know what direction they're going right now. The Poch era of the past is done, and it feels like this team has just been constantly stagnating since 2019. And bringing in the likes of Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte just seems to be enabling that stagnation. Because there's always going to be that beginning period where managers naturally perform well because no one's really familiar yet. And a manager like Conte is a perfect example of that. He has the influence to have any player under his tenure run through walls for him. It doesn't even really matter too much about the tactics, it's just a matter of the player having a fire in his heart. But once that period ends, it just exposes everything that's currently wrong with Spurs. What Tottenham need to do is go back to what made them so successful in the past, rebuild with young talent and a manager that will actually stay long term. With that all being said, Conte absolutely nails down a lot of problems that hold back this club. However, it doesn't seem like he's accepting really any of the responsibility. Remember that while yes, his players aren't performing and their confidence has been shot, he's the one enabling that by constantly sticking to the same game plan and never changing anything. And this has been happening throughout the entire season. So while yes, there's that strength of Conte's mentality, that can only last so long until it shows off pretty much all the problems tactically. And that's why I have my problems with Conte, because this isn't anything new. He's been doing this for years, with every single club, 
even the ones that he's won titles with. When something doesn't go his way, he always goes and flames the club, the players, the board, everyone. But just like the Spurs situation, he barely ever really accepts responsibility himself. It always has to be something that's working against him. And it's really ironic because, you know, he's the one talking about how Tottenham are constantly making up excuses, and that's the reason why they're never successful, and, I mean, he's literally making excuses in that same press conference. Now, obviously, because of what he said, the club isn't exactly very happy with him right now. In fact, it is said by multiple sources that Tottenham are prepared to sack Antonio Conte. And I think it's for the best, because this has reached the cycle of Conte's tenures where everything has just turned extremely toxic. But, you know, maybe Spurs do keep him. That's like a 1% chance of happening. But, you know, if it does happen, will this bad form continue? Or will this be where Tottenham turn their season around again? But if Conte is sacked, who does come in? And are they going to be yet another short-term answer? Or will this finally be the time where Spurs have their own wake-up call? But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Of course, a massive shout-out to all our patrons, including Janos Balas, Chris Damaseno, Milioway009, Weston Ware, Aldipu, Alex Rod, Ulta, Amin Suamez, Aresan, Carlos Anaya, Daniel Ortiz, Francisco Hernandez, Guy, Miguel Munoz, Return Fire, Rory Burns, Saw, The Motor Drive, Tomicus, Trevor Batson, Vanilla Mexican 17, Victor, David Dunn, Dominic Griffin, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Joa Paricio, MX Weeb, Patrick Barley, and Unbroken Persona. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations. You can follow my Twitter if you want, follow my Instagram if you like, follow my TikTok, trying to get to 20,000 there, and of course, you can follow my semi-active Twitch. But until then, I'll see you guys.